Hey, Gobi. You are now listening to Buddy Time. On today's episode, we'll be talking about passion and visiting everything new on our podcast this season. Ready to turbocharge your day with us? Let's begin our voyage. Hey, welcome back to Buddy Time. It's been a long while since our last podcast. I think it has been more than six months, almost a year already. For those who follow us since the beginning, you might have known that we have grown a lot in the past few months. We develop so many new things, um, including having our own Migudi space and hosting various events that benefits the community. Which I think we will dive deeper into this topic later on. But before we move on to today's topic, I really want to take this opportunity to welcome my friend, my business partner, our creative director, the everything all in one package important man. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's so I'm so now. <laughs> oh my god! Thank you so much for that introduction, Finn. I'm so honored to be a part of Buddy Up Company for, I guess, uh, just a little bit over a year now. To be a part of this has been uh, an amazing ride so far, and thank you for having me on this podcast. Yeah, I think for those who haven't heard of Sony before, you can. Go back to our season one. I believe is on our episode four, which talks about stage management as a passion. Yeah, and Sony was featured on that episode, and I guess that's our um, beginning to our connection to um, creating fun stuff. And here we are after almost a year. Um, We have Sony with us today on um, Buddy Time. Now he's our regular host. Stop it with the compliment. Also, say, um, let's just dive right into our conversation today. I think so. Um, a lot of our listeners might be wondering, like, what's the point of um, Buddy Time and uh, the company Buddy Up? I feel like, you know, working with Buddy Up for over a year now, a lot of the times we've come across our clients and our guests who's been asking us about why we created this platform. And um, maybe you can give everybody, all the listeners, a little insight into the works behind why you created this platform for everyone. First of all, the creation of Buddy Time is really out of some of the I would say struggles that I have before. So I believe that we all uh, experience the stage of um, not knowing what to do, not sure of what we are good at, or um, where do we go after we graduate. Is the things that I am doing really what I? Want to do? Is it going to make money for my future living? Like a lot of these questions and uncertainty, and not sure where to really find the answer. Uh, while there's always those people out there saying that um, you should know your passion, you should know what what to do in your life. But the thing is, I realized that if I wasn't given any opportunities to explore what do I like, what's my passion. Then how am I supposed to find out? Like, um, there's a saying that in order for us to figure out something, we just have to try it first. Um, whether or not it's something that we like, we try it to find out if it's something that's good for us, if it's or if it's something bad for us. So it's really having a place for people to experience different kind of activities, connect with different people, be inspired, and listen to different. Perspectives and opinions, and then to take into our own consideration and uh, reflect upon ourselves, and maybe think again of our direction for us to move on. And that's why I wanted to create a place where all the young friends can explore and try something different. Buddy Up is a creative event company. So we curate different kind of events, activities, 
hoping for people to be able to learn, play, and connect through all kinds of events and activities. And hopefully through these experiences, they get some kind of inspiration back. So they can also think back that, oh, this event is interesting. Maybe I can dive into something more like this. Or they can also be, ah, nah, this is really not what I'm looking for. Maybe I'll try something else. Like, which only, only if there is action taken to, to try to figure out something, then we will figure out what, what's the next step is, right? But we can't just stand here and just keep thinking. Like thinking doesn't make anything happen. It's the action that makes things happen. So that's why Buddy Up was created. And then because back then, um, Buddy Up was uh, founded um, during COVID period. So back then, uh, I can't really do much. I was also looking for a team as well. So back to the idea of just thinking wouldn't make me uh, go any further, even though I founded um, the company. So I thought, even though there is COVID, we can't really host any in-person activities and events. Why not try something different that I can maybe start connecting to different people, start sharing my values, beliefs, or start um, asking people around um, what could their passion be? What's their thought on passion? So that's why I started this uh, buddy time in a way to start voicing out or sharing what I believe passion would be and also with our previous um, host name and Victor, they also um, share with everybody of what they believe passion could be. And also we talk about different topics, hoping to explore different realm by discussing various topics that uh, could be beneficial to more people. Yeah, so that's the reason behind. I love that you talk about freedom of, you know, taking on responsibility and having a space to be able to really discover yourself. To me, I mean, a lot of li the listeners, if you've listened to the past season, episode four, where I was featured, uh, I did talk about this a little bit where, you know, some people might not have the privilege to really discover their passion early stage of their life. I was lucky enough to be uh, exposed to this uh, love for theater and the love for, you know, the creative works at a very young age because of my drama teacher. And it's, I feel like a lot of what you've just said really also reflects on my journey personally uh, as a business partner here at Buddy up with you. Um, you've given me quite the um, freedom to express myself and the creative thinking and the thoughts and the uh, past experiences that I have been through to be able to create what we have today. So with Buddy Up, uh, currently uh, over the past year, uh, nearly a year now, we have created uh, the Seek and Found product, which is a travel product for people who love, you know, gaming and also photography to explore Bangkok in a new light. And we also have Movie Club where uh, people who love film um, and also talking about film and dissecting film or even the designing process of um, film to come together to talk, um, as well as a lot of other events that we have in our space. Uh, from creating all of these products together, I've learned that, you know, we have this opportunity and, you know, to create a, a space for people to really explore passion in a more uh free sense within their own freedom and we're not forcing them to push themselves in any way that's not consensual i would say so it's been it's been such a privilege for me to be able to create these sort of products with you although i would say that i had a lot of fear in creating a lot of these sessions and also a lot of fear moving forward in creating anything uh, as well as the buddy time podcast that we're recording but being a part of buddy up and also a part of Nigudi, I've had the chance to explore these interests and also expand my comfort zone, I would say, to experience more things. And that has taught me actually that nothing is impossible. You know, I feel like I can do all of these things and do it with um, such grace, even though it's not perfect. We've, uh, over the past year, we've 
gotten a chance to also slowly build upon the community that we've always uh, dream of building. And slowly we see the fruition of this that's coming together. And um, I'm really proud of so far what we've done. And um, the reason why I think we also bring back the Buddy Tell podcast is also to really expand upon our community even more. We really want to be able to reach all of you from all places of the world and not just in um, Bangkok. And if, you know, if anybody would like to join us in this talk as well, we're really welcoming all guests to share their wisdom, share their path and share their passion with us. What motivates you every day in your life, um, what you like to do, what you wake up thinking and, you know, feeling really excited about. I think it's really interesting how, you know, things happen. I myself is a true believer of you know, the whole spiritual universe, law of attraction thing. Um, and to me, everything happens for a purpose. Um, why suddenly there is an inspiration for me to um, found Buddy Up and then another inspiration to just do Buddy Time, another inspiration to just do these and create that. To It's like, you know, puzzles, pieces of puzzle. You you just create something small, small, um, first and then eventually after a while you zoom out and then you look into the whole picture then you realize all the little things that you you've done before now you can piece them together into like a clearer picture so um to me it also it's also about really listen to your intuition to follow what your heart really calls for and i understand that um, some people will struggle in this uh, kind of uh, practice or topic or belief that, oh, I don't know how to um, um, listen to my intuition and follow my heart. It's so hard to follow our heart. Like what if it's not, it's irrational and stuff like that. But I think we can talk about that in um, the future, um, more into this kind of spiritual topics, which is really important. But what I'm trying to bring back to the conversation here is that Sony, he mentioned about he came into being a business partner of Buddy Up. He came into helping me to create all of these things. Oh, definitely. L lots of fear in the beginning and lots of fear right now. Yeah, the, the point I'm trying to say is we will always have this kind of fear, especially when we are going to do something that we've never done before and something that is out of our comfort zone. But the thing is, in order for us to grow, that's the only way, which is, to take action, to overcome our fear, and to just try without um, being afraid of what if. A lot of time it's a what if that stops us, and then we will end up being regret and nothing really happens. So if we want to uh, tie back to the passion thing again, I'm not sure if your passion has changed, but right now, to me, my passion is still the same. My definition of passion is still the same. To me, I only have one passion. And this passion is really just building this whole platform, this whole community where we can benefit the whole uh, young adults to help them figure out what could be their um, next step, right, through different um, events and activities. But um, the thing is, we are here to provide a platform, to provide all these opportunities. But we need you to collaborate with us. What I mean by collaborate is I've given you the opportunity, the platform. Will you at least try to come and attend or participate in some of these activities and to at least feel something through different kind of activities? And I don't mean just attending our events or activities. I, I mean like all all kind of events and activities outside that is available. Try as much as you can. Like, um, try the bigger ones, the more um, formal ones, the seminar, the conference. Also try the more fun, creative, friendly opening ones, like the ones that we created. Then you might discover something, right? So, like, what do you think, like, for you, Sony, like, did your passion change? And, and because you've been creating so much in this past year do you see any i i i definitely feel like um when you ask that question 
an immediate thought in my mind that came up was definitely something related to the movie club. So I actually posted about this on my own Instagram socials uh, in my story feed. You know, I felt a growth in me because uh, for, for those of you who are in my close friend group, you might also know that I'm super afraid of horror movies. I would not ever watch it, ever. No matter how enticing anybody makes it, like, no, like, just no. But because of what I do as a job on my daily life, we've explored in the realms of horror and realms of thriller. And I watched it. You know, I, I was like what Sin said, you know, to try it out, try all these events out. And I had to try out my own event, right? So um, I tried it out and I realized that it was a fear that I created myself that I felt like, oh, don't get me wrong, horror movies are still scary. If I watch it, I'll still probably have nightmares. But it allowed me to really open up to the thought that I'm not a person who would reject things right away. Like I would at least try it out. And there are actually horror movies that we've watched together during the movie club that I actually didn't feel like it was scary. It was actually funny. For example, The Pope's Exorcist, like if anybody has watched it, um, to me, it, it was categorized as a horror. But when I watched it, I felt like it was really comedic. And one of our interns said that it's a dark fantasy. So, you know, that's a nice way to put it, like dark fantasies, horror, you know, what's the difference? So, yeah. Um, another thing I think that Sin uh, brought up that I think is really integral since we're talking about why we're bringing back um, body time and also the concept of passion and the concept of what, what we're doing together as a company to establish what we believe in. I really think that in our space, we also offer the opportunities for uh, students to sign up for internship. And that, to me, that is a thing that we work on really hard on and uh, carefully craft a program where students are not totally hand-guided to do everything, but they're here to explore their own limits in terms of what they like to do and what their passion could be. You know, like you could be studying uh, international relations or things that are not even related, like geography and things that are not related directly to what events is all about, but you can bring those um, uh, knowledge and utilize it in a way that we can connect together because at the end of the day, events is all about the human connection and we can all relate together no matter what uh, topics we are uh, creating together. So in that essence, I feel like I would say that I would never want to uh, encourage someone to marginalize themselves inside a certain comfort zone, but to break free from this sort of measurements of yourself or what you can do or um, what things you're studying. And because you're studying this, you can do other things. That's not where I would encourage someone to think, but instead to use what you know to develop that and build upon that into a, a much bigger things like, you know, building blocks of a castle. I think it's worth to mention as well about the community that we are trying to build here through all different kind of activities, um, channels that we're trying to develop here. Uh, we see community as a really essential and important part of Buddy Up and Migudi because like Sony said, after all, events is all about human interactions. It's connecting with each other. Not to mention that our three main elements of all the events that we create is based on learn, play, and connect. So connect is definitely a huge part in all the things that we do here. So connecting, maybe some people might feel quite intimidated or they're just introvert in nature. They're not really out there to you know go out and talk to people and what do you think like for this type of I would say um introvert or people who are more shy how can we encourage them or how 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 would you suggest these um type of friends to be a bit more you know like let's try go out and um try different Activity. They can start by listening to our podcast because they can do that at home. Exactly, that's true. Such a genius way of answering. 
exactly. Like to me, I I have a way of um sort of like I have my own understanding of introvert. Like me being an introvert myself, but but more like I've grown to train myself into developing the skill of being extrovert when it's needed. So I told my I shared with my close friend that when I was young, when I was really small, like. Children define children <laughs> age, like around elementary school time, and so I have a business background. So my my parents would always take me out to have dinner with, you know, all those special guests, uh, professionals, and they would sort of like try to teach me some table manner and also try to let me get used to dining with big people. With strangers, with people you're not comfortable with, and back then I was such a shy girl, and I was so introverted that I refused to, you know, attend this kind of dinner gathering. Um, there was a time that a, a reporter came to interview my parents, and in the end, they want us to have a f- family picture taken in our living room, and I w- I was. Just hiding in my own bedroom, and my mom came knocking my door and said, "Hey, Sin, come take a family photo. It's for the reporter. It's to, going to be published." And I didn't want to do it. I refused. I'm like, "No, mom, I don't want to go." And they couldn't force me to do it, so I just didn't. And rebellious. Yeah, I was, but at the same time, I I just felt really uncomfortable, you know, doing things like that. Like, for definitely very shy, introverted girl uh, when I was young, but. Throughout the years, like see me, I'm trying to you know talk into the podcast now, and I have developed this entrepreneurship mindset, and I go out there to talk to clients. I go to all other events. This is not something that I own naturally. It was me taking a long time trying to step out of my comfort zone to to slowly develop these get getting used to these kind of feelings I would say, and to now that I am proud to say that oh I'm not scared of attending you know big events, um I'm not scared of you know talking to um a lot of people um I'm not scared to approach people right now um not to say that of course um deep down I still have that um feeling of oh what if oh I'm scared uh, no matter what we still will have that kind of feeling. But what I mean is, I'm able to overcome those stop you factor whenever that happens. And and this is something that like I, I would encourage um, if you're an introvert person or a really shy person like me, yeah, like start trying something uh, just really, really small um, and then just keep um, doing it until you get used to it. And eventually you will develop a new skill that you will thank yourself for so much. I feel like as a um, extrovert in comparison to you, in that sense, and as an extrovert in this case, like seeing you um, in the, within the time that I've known you, I am also so inspired that you have grown to be someone who takes charge of your own responsibilities and the things that you do. I consider myself, even though I consider myself and as an extrovert, I also have issues myself, like, you know, uh, public speaking or going to talk to someone who I may not know personally or getting engaged with uh, our clients when they come talk to us. These are the things that I myself am also overcoming or learning to uh, sort of develop. So um, what I'm trying to say is that these sort of fear, it's not just, um, it's not necessarily just within like introvert people, but extrovert people feel that way as well. But for me personally, seeing you as an introvert grow into someone who uh, can be more extroverted whenever you need to be. I feel really inspired by that. When I see these things happen, I channel those energies back to myself, and I think, "Hey, yo, like, I am a like I can do that too. Like, you know, what's what's the worst that can happen?" And many times when I reflect back upon these sort of situations, I realize most of the time that. The biggest obstacle and the biggest thing that I have to overcome is not the actions themselves, but 
my own self thinking. Yeah, that's true. And actually, uh, there's also an interesting point that I think we can also sort of uh, discuss, which is, um, again, uh, linking back to the community and connection. It's about, I'm sure a lot of us have heard of this, which is the people you stay, you be with, is going to influence you, like your friends. Thank you, Sin, for influencing me. <laughs> no, thank you for influencing me too. Like, I'm sure we inspire each other. That's why we're able to really work really well to create this platform. Never doubt that. But yeah, so um, like we, we all heard about this um, idea of your friend circle will have an impact on you, right? Your growth, right? Who you stay with is sort of like a reflection of who you are. So it's also sort of like the community that you go to. You choose to go to a very um, open-minded, friendly, supportive, loving community. And of course, if like after a long time being in this community, you will slowly feel their energies and you will maybe potentially be inspired by them as well. And your mindset will naturally slowly change. And that's when a person start to change as well to become, you know, the the friends who are in this friend group. And that's why um, a healthy community, a healthy friend group, we're able to support each other and grow. So for those of you who are thinking of, oh, how can I grow? How can I um, get support? How can I open my, you know, vision to something broader? I would say try to find a community that you think is going to be supportive for your case and try to engage with this community. There are so many there's so many community out there like especially in Bangkok. I to me Bangkok is a very vibrant, colorful, active city. I'm sure you can find different places where you can um connect with different people. With the arts people, with the movie people, with the dance people, with the business entrepreneur people. And hopefully maybe we can create sessions for you to also discover your people at our place. Yeah, exactly. So this is all about, you know, like connecting. Growth is such a big word that it can encapsulate so many things. And there's so many ways to really grow. And if you're really looking to grow, I would say one of the basic, basic thing is go out there and connect. And connect, I mean, connect with the people, connect with the things you do, connect with the things that you're going to explore. Hey, Gooby, thank you for listening to this episode of Buddy Time. I feel really happy to be back on this again. It brings back a lot of memories, why I started before, and now we're getting back into this again. And it's really nice as well to have Sony with us now that we can always discuss and chat on really interesting topics in the following months, days. So be sure to stay tuned. And also, if you're interested in our you know, platforms, events, activities, um, be sure to check out our social media as well. And also, if you're interested to be on our podcast, we would love to have you come and discuss your opinions with us on really interesting topics. So if you're interested, feel free to go onto our website to sign up for the podcast. And on our next episode of Buddy Time Podcast, we'll have our close friend, Victor, coming back to speak with us and share us all his wisdoms on the topic of manifestation magic. So, so stay tuned for that. Yay! Can't wait. See you! See you.